I wanted to bring today's episode to the podcast talking about faith and fertility from a Christian perspective. We're talking about scripture, how we can deepen our faith during the fertility journey, sometimes the rules around uh, our faith and how that can impact our fertility journey. And really, how do we, again, how do we deepen that connection so we can see a positive outcome? Registration is now open for our free fertility challenge. This live fertility challenge starts on Monday, November the 8th. Go to fertilitydietfreebie.com. That's fertilitydietfreebie, F-R-E-E-B-I-E.com to register. And in this live five-day challenge, you'll learn which foods are right for your fertility so that you can prepare for pregnancy success. Which foods could be harming your fertility so that you don't waste time consuming the wrong diet? Simple steps you can implement right away so that you can optimize your preconception health and get pregnant naturally. I've worked with a chef with a nutrition background to help prepare these fall and winter recipes that will help prepare your body for a baby. This challenge is for you and your partner. Go to Fertility Diet Freebie. That's FertilityDietFreebie.com to join. There's a lot of information about which supplements are right for fertility. And like most couples I speak with, you are probably taking a lot of supplements. But are these supplements optimizing or harming your fertility? That's why we recommend professional-grade supplements without harmful dyes, fillers, or top allergens so that you can prepare your body in the best way for pregnancy. And as you may know, we take a functional approach to fertility. And while supplements are included in your customized protocols, which are based on testing, they are only part of the equation because there's no pill you can take that will out-supplement the basics such as poor diet, dysregulated sleep, either moving too much or not enough, and not dealing with chronic stress. So we do recommend basic supplements for both men and women. And these are essential starters that you need to have right now to optimize your preconception health. And I'm excited to offer you a special discount at our Fab Fertile store you'll receive 15% discount on our professional grade supplements. So simply go to Fab Fertile Store, that's F-A-B, fertilestore.com to access the basic supplements so that you can prepare your body for pregnancy success without wasting time and money on supplements that may not be right for you. Go to Fab Fertile Store, that's fabfertilestore.com and save 15% on your order. Hey there, thanks so much for listening to the Get Pregnant Naturally podcast. And I've got a favor to ask you if you are enjoying learning about the functional approach to fertility, consider going to iTunes and rating and reviewing the podcast. This is how it helps the show reach more people that are struggling with infertility, knowing that there's another approach that really can get to the bottom of why it's not working in the first place. So all you need to do is if you're on the app or the desktop, just go in and consider leaving a five-star rating and leave a review. And there is step-by-step instructions in the show notes showing you exactly how to do that. So if you can just take a few minutes, just take a few minutes right now, you can pause this, this recording, come back, leave the review. It would really mean the world to me and help others that are on the fertility journey as well. Take care. I didn't need to go to donor eggs. Obviously, mm-hmm. I don't regret it. I have beautiful children. I could have done things differently, restored. I was still cycling back in my in my 20s. I could have looked at my health, the environmental toxins, the stress I was under, Many, many women are being told their eggs are too old. That's often merely an assumption that's not based on actual evidence. The reason being that there is no direct test of egg quality. You can't test egg quality. It's the man who's got a food sensitivity or he has a zinc deficiency. Like there can be a root cause to these symptoms that are, you know, quote unquote, period problems that the doctor will pass you a pill without any question of why. And some part of you knows that if you can reframe your journey from not one of struggle, or if it is struggle, learn how to embrace the struggle. Learn how to embrace it. Most conditions in the child occur during the nine months of development. It's the the genetic switches are turned on or turned off and they're pre-programmed. So you are in such a powerful, amazing position to do amazing things for your kids. You know, why is IVF the first step? Because we believe it should be the last step. Welcome to Get Pregnant Naturally, where functional medicine and natural fertility solutions will help you get pregnant and have your baby.
Hey there, I'm Sarah Clark, founder of Fab Fertile and your host. I believe the functional approach is the first step for anyone struggling with infertility, and my aim is to help you get pregnant naturally. Today, I'm welcoming Tiffany Jo Baker back to the podcast, and we're digging into how to deepen your faith from a Christian perspective during the fertility journey. Tiffany Jo Baker is part of my team here at Fab Fertile. She offers a faith-based session in our couples coaching program to help deepen your, your faith when you're on the fertility journey. Uh, she is a mom of two teen girls, surrogate mom who has carried five babies for three families dealing with infertility, and a wife of 21 years to an extreme outdoorsman. She's a certified life, relationship, and corporate communication coach with a master's degree in professional counseling and over 20 years of marriage and family ministry experience. Thanks so much for listening. I'm so thankful that you're here. Make sure you hit subscribe. And if you know someone else who is on the fertility journey, please share this podcast with them. Hey, Tiffany Joe, excited to have you back on the podcast. I am so excited to be here. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah, it's been a while since uh, you were on. Uh, so maybe you can just um, refresh the listeners there with your story. You have quite a, a, a journey of really how you came to do this work. So you could just share it with us again. Absolutely. So I think it was probably back in two, early 2000s. Um, my husband and I were youth pastors at a church. Um, I was also the preschool director. We had a one-year-old. And I came in to share some good news with my friends and fellow preschool workers that I had found out that I was pregnant with our second. And as I was in that circle of friends, um, I caught the eye and the facial expressions of one of my friends across the circle from me. And as I was sharing our news of pregnancy, I saw the look of joy and pain flash across her face all at the same time. Mm -hmm. And in that moment, God spoke to my heart two things. And he said, one, she's dealing with infertility, which I didn't know because she hadn't really shared about it. And number two, I've given you a gift. And which surprised me, he gave me the gift of pregnancy. And in that moment, it was a seed that was planted in my heart that I was to use that gift to help others. And since then, I have been a surrogate and carried um, two sets of twins and one single precious baby for three families dealing with infertility. Wow. Yeah. That's... And that is, that is, that's how I got started in this, um, in this space, supporting couples on their family building journey and really having a heart for those, um, who have that God dream of the baby that God has put on their heart. Yeah. The, the surrogacy thing, I think really is, we, we did a whole episode talking about that, but mm -hmm. it, it is just, uh, yeah, it used to say like a calling and really, yeah, to help those, those three families is like so amazing. And so today we're going to be talking about faith and Christian faith and really uh, how we can deepen our faith during the uh, fertility journey. So what can, what can we do there? Yes, absolutely. And I so appreciate you bringing this to the fertility space. Um, as I even mentioned in my story, God was a big part of leading us to, when I say us, my husband and I and our girls, to be a surrogate. And I think deepening our faith is kind of like when you're building a structure, a foundation, the lower you go, the deeper you go, the higher a building or a structure can stand, the stronger it can be when those storms come. Um, and we know the infertility journey is definitely um, can be pathed with a lot of storms that we have to struggle with. And so deepening our faith really first and foremost is about building a personal relationship with God and not just seeing him and Christianity as a bunch of rules, do's and do nots, but but actually somebody who's with us in the journey in the good times and the bad and really the ways that we do that and deepening our faith and building that personal relationship with the Lord is through spiritual disciplines and things that, that we do that can draw us to just like a spouse. It's, it's spending time with them. It's being around people with like, um, core values, maybe going to church, praying, worship, gratitude, getting on the positive side of the relationship. Um, and all of those spirit, spiritual disciplines are meant to deepen our faith and really understanding the heart that God has for us and how that plays out in our everyday lives. Yeah. To keep showing up sometimes. Yes, absolutely. But yeah. Sometimes on this journey, like we can feel broken or mm -hmm. that maybe that, you know, this fertility journey is a punishment. And then we may not be able to see a path forward. How, how would faith play into that? Yeah, that's such a good question. I think so many times 
people don't know what to say and they say some kind of cliche or some kind of lie about how God is and how this might be a punishment or, um, you know, things like that, that people say in good standing. Or I also, I think we tend to see God or heavenly father as how our biological or earthly father is. So if our father, if our parents, if we came from like a, a strict disciplinarian household or from authoritative um, parents or from parents who are very much do this, you do you get that. I think sometimes we can portray that on our relationship with how God is. And that can um, sometimes foster that feeling that I did something wrong and I'm being punished. But the more you get to know God, the more you realize that he's a merciful God. He's a good God. He's a God that's with us and work things all out for good. And that it's okay when we're broken to go to him. That is when he wants us and is there for us even the most. Um, I like Psalm 16, 11 in the scriptures. It says, you make known to me the path of life in your presence. There's fullness of joy. And that's where we can really find peace we can find purpose, we can find healing, and we can find somebody, um, a good, the God of the universe, the creator God to just be with us, even in those hard places. Um, it's really interesting, Sarah, a 2004 study on religious coping methods mm-hmm. um, from the Journal of Health and Psychology found that people who approach God more as like a partner, a collaborator in their life, somebody who's doing life with them, had a better mental and physical health outcomes versus those who are angry at God or, like you said, feel punished or abandoned or those who just think that um, God does everything and we sit back and do nothing. Um, those are the ones who had worse mental and physical outcomes, um, just similar to how a loving relationship is with a spouse or a partner or um, family. Um, the more loving the relationship is, the better the outcomes mentally and physically will have. You know, that leads into my next question with when people say it's God's plan and then Mm -hmm. sort of like sitting back and it's God's plan and then, or on the reverse side, it's God's revenge, kind of like, yeah, like we talked about the punishment. Mm -hmm. And so that study kind of plays into that with the the partnership and anything else you wanted to say on that one? Yeah, I think just a couple tips, you know, those, those cliches that we have to watch out for, like God's getting back at you. You must, another big one in the Christian faith is you, you must not have enough faith to believe that you're going to have a baby. And I think these are awful and, and that these are lies that just um, play against our, our mindset and our emotions. And I would just say, what does God say to you about this journey? Instead of what other people are saying, or even what your own mind sometimes is saying, like, what is God saying? Um, I, and the second part of that is spending time really in the Bible and letting God lead you to a promise or a story or scripture that you can stand on, um, that really shares his true heart for you in this family building journey. Um, one of my favorites is Psalms 138a, and it says, the Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. And as people of the Christian faith, the more we get to know him and live this life, we know that it's not perfect because we're in a human world. It is not perfect, but we know that, that God is a good God and he's with us. And we trust that he sees the end from the beginning and he's weaving everything together in a beautiful, um, masterpiece and that we just hold on and, I call them full circle moments. We might not always know why things are happening in the moment, but often we can look back and see, oh, that's why. Oh, that's why. You know, um, Sarah, even your own journey of going through um, fertility has led you to be able to help other people. And I truly believe as we go through things and as the Bible says, we comfort because we were comforted. And when we can go through situations, we learn, we come more, become more resilient, we find our strength, we deepen our strength, we find our purpose. God uses all things. He doesn't cause all things, but he will use all things for good. Yeah, it's interesting because I was just doing the interview because um, we're on in this series, we're talking about different uh, types of faith and, mm-hmm. and really in the Jewish faith, talking about everything happens for a reason, which I'm not sure if that's necessarily just a Jewish faith, but mm-hmm. faith, but it could be uh, other faiths as well. And then, you know, that 
phrase in itself can be, you know, lead you down a bit of a negative path, mm-hmm. right? Think thinking right. like, oh my goodness. What yeah, what's your take on that one? Yeah, I think all things happen for a reason. I think it's in the moment. I think it's like big picture God picture that the individual things can still be hard and can still be messy and can still be broken. But when you see the big picture of your life and how it weaves together with those people's lives that you're an influence with and that you're in circles with, um, I think that God uses all those things. Um, I don't, like I said before, I don't think he causes them because he's not a, an evil God. He's a good God. And so that's not his heart for him. You know, he could have made us as robots. But he didn't. He made us as humans with choices. And as in any relationship, we want people to choose to love us and to choose to be in relationship with us. And um, and that's what the Christian faith is all about, is choosing to be in a relationship with him and him being with us and him working things out eventually, if I could add that in, for right. our good. Yeah, it's like if the the struggle has a beginning, middle, and end, and sometimes you could be stuck in the early stages or the mess mm-hmm. in the middle. But yes, and mm-hmm. absolutely. And then, but the stages of grief. But so, how can we use faith or scripture to to help with that? And this is where I thrive, and this is where I love to be. It's that soul care piece. Um, the soul, according to scripture, is our mind. So it's our mindset. It's our will, it's our choices, and it's our emotions. So God made us all with the ability to think and with emotions. And emotions are extremely important. The stages of grief are important. God created us to feel. They're indicators of what we're experiencing. They can help keep us healthy through the things we're going through. But I think problems sometimes come when we can get stuck in an an emotion or in a mindset or how we handle those hard emotions. And so I think like I think of myself when I'm in hard places dealing with grief or a diagnosis or a relationship or finan- financial um, issues, I'll go to scripture and just really find stories of others and what they did during tough times, um, how they handled it. What are, you know, the, the Bible and the stories, they had meaning based on the people of that day, right? But there's also eternal truths that come out of them and biblical principles that we can use in our lives today. Um, so I think it's so important that we renew our mind in the truth of what the Bible says and that we, in that, take care of our heart and our emotions and, and be vigilant to not stay stuck in any one stage um, too long, more than it is healthy or is necessary. Um, but at the end of the day, I think crises really reveal what's in us and what we truly believe. And sometimes during these journeys of infertility and family building, um, it also can re- end up in a crisis of faith, right. not just in a crisis of family building. And so through the path, we really have to decide, what do I believe? Even in this hard place. Is God good? Is God there? And does he have hope for me? I would like to invite you and your partner to a supercharge your fertility discovery call. This call is for you. If you meet at least one of the following criteria, you've been trying to get pregnant for at least two years. You've been through at least one failed IUI or IVF. This call is for action takers. If you're not ready and you wait, the risk is you'll need to wait two to three months for a spot to open up. If you're seriously considering work with us, go to fabfertile dot com that's fab com and click on apply here that's fab fertile fab dot com and click on apply here then you'll be booked in and ready to spend 30 minutes to give you the action plan to getting pregnant naturally yeah it is kind of that piece where you know we can do all the functional testing get the mm-hmm. right supplements and diet and lifestyle and check but if if someone potentially, you know, a, a well-meaning RE has implanted in your psyche that, you know, you will struggle. This is not going to work. Your eggs are too old mm-hmm. and you buy into that and mm-hmm. you're like, it's not going to work. Like, and you've completely exactly. lost hope. And then all the things around you, be it spirituality, your faith, you kind of feel left on your own here. 
And then there's, to me, there also is a controlling piece of that too, because if you just knew it would work, Mm -hmm. what would you do differently? And I think Mm -hmm. that's all in many aspects or almost like all aspects of life. Like Mm -hmm. you want to control how it's going to come. But if you knew it would happen, like what would you do differently? Exactly. Absolutely. I think that's so, so important to, to think about and to really be aware of what we are thinking, what we are believing and how that affects our decisions. Um, and how we can use that to our, for our benefit too. Mm -hmm. And so obviously with the Christian faith and, and many, many faiths, it's, it's sort of, it uh, circles around, uh, community, um, going to church and, you know, Sunday school and youth groups and, um, many times trying to, uh, you know, uh, attending some of these can be really painful because you're, often presented with strollers and kids Mm -hmm. and families and extremely triggering. So when you want to, you know, connect in that setting, go to church or the, you know, your community services, how do you do that if it's just so triggering for us? I think that's such a great question. Uh, And you're so right. There often are set up around family life and that can be so, so difficult. Um, thankfully, more and more churches are aware of the infertility struggle. Um, more and more churches are offering infertility support groups and even online ministries out there who are doing Christian support groups. Um, even some churches, um, even the churches I've been involved with, I've made sure to use my voice to bring a different perspective and to talk to the pastors um, about what Mother's Day is like for somebody dealing with infertility. And there are some churches out there that will do um, a prayer time for the for the moms to be who are in the service, who are wanting to to um, be pregnant and to carry children and to deliver children. And they'll actually do a special prayer time for them during that so that they know that they're heard, so that they know that they're not alone. Um, I think it's completely necessary to have healthy boundaries, just like we would if if it just wasn't a good season for us to go to a baby shower. It might not be a good season for you to go to a Mother's Day service. Uh, But I think also, too, we need to make sure that when we're in those hard times, a lot of times we will ca- we will tend to self isolate mm-hmm. and which propels that i'm alone um nobody understands feeling and in that isolation we can get into that into an even deeper darker place and we're now we're not just dealing with the medical issues but now we're dealing with the emotional struggles um i did find some interesting studies that show the benefits of going to church um depression is actually 22% less for people who go to church. And that's because of finding that social community, that support community um, where you can go and be with people who have similar core values. They show that studies show that people will smoke less, lead healthier lives. Actually, even the mortality rate goes down. They have a beautiful boosted immune system, lower blood pressure, even better sleep, one of the studies shows for people that go to church. So I think, like you said, it's important to have those healthy boundaries um, where we go, what we do, but also don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. There's so much good in a Christian community that you can get out of it with the social support and um, all those physical and emotional benefits that come with it as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just to ask to see, you know, as you say, these, these services are starting to be available and to, Mm -hmm. and to maybe not make the assumption it's not there when, when when they're, they're willing to help. Yeah. And what are your thoughts on the rules around faith and how this can impact fertility from a, um, a Christian standpoint? Yeah. I know sometimes like within the Catholic community and, and there's view on, um, assisted reproductive technology and things like that, I would just say that there's many denominations within the Christian faith. And although there's guiding biblical principles, each denomination kind of chooses how they walk that out. So if you're in the Catholic church, but, but you feel like God is leading you in a different direction, and there's so many ways that God speaks to us and can confirm things, I think at the end of the day, we need to do what God is leading us to do. Um, making sure it aligns with the biblical standards, right? Um, but continue to do each step of the way what God has 
called and created us to do. Um, I think even within the surrogacy journey, even thinking about each couple had to determine what they would do with their remaining embryos. Mm-hmm. And every every denomination, every faith um, and people, we all have different views on when life begins. Now, we know God is pro-life, but your interpretation or your denom- denomination's Um, interpretation of what that means and how that plays out might be a little bit different. So at the end of the day, um, I always say there's different ways God speaks and will confirm what you are to do, but he speaks through his word. He speaks through godly counsel. He speaks through peace and whether or not we have peace. He speaks through unity with our spouse. What does your spouse say? What, What can you live with? for the rest of your life? And also, what can you not live without? Um, so I think it's important to take those biblical um, principles into consideration and to walk them out. But I think how we walk them out can be a little bit different for each one of us. Yeah, very personalized approach. Do mm-hmm. what feels right for you. And then so for your partner uh, during during the fertility journey, so how do we turn to and not away from our partner? This is your specialty. Yes. The first thing I would say is become a we couple. And when I say we, it's W-E. And a we couple, studies have showed that couples that actually use words when they're describing their life and they talk about their life as in we, us, are, have a better... Um, less, less divorce rate and also a higher level of marital satisfaction versus couples who speak individually as an I, my, me. So I'd say become a we couple. This is a team effort, right? Mm -hmm. We can't do this one without the other. It's a team effort. And so there's a, there's a scripture in the Bible that says where there's a unity, there's a commanded blessing. So there's power in unity and there's a power in you and your spouse, your partner coming together and deciding what's right for you and moving forward and, and walking that out. Um, I know during hard journeys, it's so easy to see what your partner is or isn't doing and get frustrated uh, because you're doing this, this, and this, and you don't see what they're doing sometimes. So I think it's important for us to really identify what does our spouse, our partner bring to this journey? What are their strengths that they bring? Because most of the time we're connected with people who are different than us. Mm -hmm. So you might be the emotive one who's bringing the, I feel this way. And the the feelings and the motives are the motivation as you walk it out. Whereas your your partner might be more the um, cognitive, logical person who might say, yes, I understand you feel this, but we have these these logical set of circumstances that we have to think about too, right? The finances, the time, the, the medical doctors, things like that. So I think really identifying what the strengths are that you each bring to the table, becoming a we couple. And even studies have shown that couples who attend Christian church together are less likely to divorce and have higher rates of marital happiness as well. So I would say join your, your faith, your core values and, um, do things together as well that brings life to you and brings life to um, how God's called you and created you to be. Yeah, I love that. The, the we piece is interesting. Mm-hmm. And, the, and the two different, yeah, many times on this journey, right? We're like, oh, we're over here, you know, as a female, like we feel like we're, you know, joining all the groups and yep. and having all the feelings and the, and the male partner, maybe, you know, not that he's not feeling, but he's, he's, he's handling it differently. And yes. And in my situation, he, yeah, my husband is more logical. He's mm-hmm. like, let's look at all this stuff. And I'm like, but we're doing all this, but yeah, you compliment each other and the person has a way of coping. And even though, yeah, it may seem like the other person's not in pain, but just mm-hmm. because they're not handling it the same way you are, doesn't mean they aren't in pain. So true. And so the serving others piece and how does that help with, with faith and especially when you're in the middle of a struggle? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Being a part of a church community, a faith-based community, serving is such a big part of that. Whether you're volunteering at church, you're serving a mission, um, going out in your community. And I think number one, it, it gets our eyes off of just what's happening in our 
family. Mm-hmm. Um, it does give us awareness of what we, what we can do and the joy we can bring others. Um, it also gives us opportunity to see other people who are going through things even worse than us and can give us a little bit different perspective on our journey. I think serving others is a part of that keep on living piece. Even when you're amidst um, the fertility journey and it's so hard, there's so many other aspects of your life and your journey. And I think that's one of the ways that you can keep living and keep um, showing up, as you said earlier, uh, so that you can keep moving forward. Those are little pockets of um, giving you energy, giving you hope, giving you purpose to keep going and keep moving. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love that. Because a lot of times we've put all those things that we that give us the joy and happiness, we put them on hold because we're like singularly focused on the one thing. Exactly. And then it's being well, it's like pulling apart a relationship and then our, our self as well and bringing mm-hmm. these things back that then helps our, you know, helps balance our hormones and our cortisol levels. Mm-hmm. And so um, any resources you'd like to recommend um, for our listeners? Yeah, absolutely. I would love to recommend. I have a 31 day day devotional and Mm -hmm. it's called Soul Care for Go Getters. And it's just bite sized nuggets. Um, I share a story and then a Bible verse. And it's really for people who are in the middle of their mess and their mission. And it's perfect for people who are in the family building stage. Um, the, the subtitle is refresh and refocus in five minutes a day. And some of the different daily topics are the the middle is always messy. Um, Learn to rest and not quit and you are not forgotten. So it's really just bite-sized nuggets of God's heart for you, even in the middle of the mess and gives you some, um, some things to hold on to as you keep moving forward. And besides that, I love apps like Bible Gateway or even listening to YouTube. There's some great pastors on there that just give really faith-filled messages to help your mindset, to help your heart um, as you're moving forward on your journey. Great. And your link, where, all, all that in the show notes, what, what is the, your link again? Uh, you can go to tiffanyjoebaker.com and I've got a tab right there for the Devo and also have a podcast on there. Great. So we'll have that link in the show notes. Any final thoughts on this, Tiffany Joe? No, I would just, I would just reiterate Psalm 138, 8a, the Lord will fulfill his purpose for you and to just get really deep, get close to him and, um, know his heart for you and know that he's with you in the good times and the bad. Mm, I love that. Thank you so much for coming back on the, the podcast. I appreciate it. Thank you, Sarah. I regularly speak with five to 10 couples per week who are struggling to have their baby. And although we want to help everyone, we only have four spots available per month to work with us. I would like to invite you and your partner to a supercharge your fertility discovery call. And this calls for you if you meet at least one of these criteria. You've been trying to get pregnant for at least two years. You've been through at least one failed IUI or IVF. This calls for action takers. If you're not ready and you wait, the risk is you'll need to wait two to three months for a spot to open up. If you're seriously considering working with us, go to Fab Fertile, F-A-B Fertile, and click on book a free call. That's Fab Fertile, F-A-B Fertile, and click on book a free call. Then you'll be all booked in and ready to spend 30 minutes to give you the action plan to getting pregnant naturally. There's a lot of information about which supplements are right for fertility. And like most couples I speak with, you are probably taking a lot of supplements. But are these supplements optimizing or harming your fertility? That's why we recommend professional grade supplements without harmful dyes, fillers, or top allergens so that you can prepare your body in the best way for pregnancy. And as you may know, we take a functional approach to fertility. And while supplements are included in your customized protocols, which are based on testing, they are only part of the equation because there's no pill you can take that will out supplement the basics such as poor diet, dysregulated sleep, either moving too much or not enough and not dealing with chronic stress. So we do recommend basic supplements for both men and women. And these are essential starters that you need to have right now to optimize your preconception health. And I'm excited to offer you a special discount at our Fab Fertile store. You'll receive 15% discount on our professional grade supplements. So simply go to Fab Fertile Store, that's F-A-B, FertileStore.com to access the basic supplements so that you can prepare your body for pregnancy success without wasting time and money on supplements that may not be right for you. Go to Fab Fertile Store, that's FabFertileStore.com and save 15% on your order.
The Get Pregnant Naturally podcast, including show notes and links, provides information with respect to healthy living, nutrition, lab testing, and is intended for informational purposes only. The information provided is not a substitute for medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment, nor is it to be construed as such. We cannot guarantee that the information provided on the Get Pregnant Naturally podcast reflects the most up-to-date medical research. Information is provided without representation or warranties of any kind. Please consult a qualified physician for medical advice and always seek the advice of a qualified health care provider with any questions you may have regarding your health and nutrition program.